Where? I've played Stardew Valley for over 600 hours, and never before have I seen this place. It's just my tree, my small house, and me in the middle of nowhere. How did I get here, you ask? Well, let's go back to the beginning. A few weeks ago, I realized with all my videos I've ever made on Stardew Valley and all my hours of playtime, I've never even cooked 10 dishes. So in the next week, I'll find a way of accomplishing every locked Stardew achievement I have, or at least try my best. I would be playing on a year 2 farm, you may know it from when I cheated on my wife. Ignoring this fact, my first order of business was obviously to increase my palate, so I headed over to Robin's and made the purchase of two fridges for easier storage of ingredients. Returning home, I placed them down and opened up the kitchen. I think I'll grab one of these and uh, maybe one of the- Well. That was easy. But these two being the simplest achievements I needed, I knew it wasn't getting any easier. Among many others, my next goal was polyculture, ship 15 of each crop. I began by heading to Pierre's, but before I arrived, I took the initiative to create the list. Yeah, I don't know what that was, to be, to be This beautiful concoction shows every crop that I need to buy in every season. And after consulting the list, I bought 80 potato seeds and promptly left. Five hours later, I made my return and recognizing my mistake, bought 100 rice shoots and promptly left. I planted the rice when I got home, built up a silo to grind them alive and entered the mines. Why, you may ask, you've already completed them. Well, Jacob... Big Marlin over here offers the Protector of the Valley achievement, which requires me to halve the population of many of the native mine species. This may sound dubious to you, but it was all warranted when the man in the corner handed me a skeleton mask. Finally, I can express my emotions in real life. I grabbed a leak and wandered into town, handing it over to Evelyn, counting towards the Big Help achievement to complete 40 help needed requests. Unfortunately, there were none more available, so I walked over to the old Jojomart instead, donated some fruit and wine, and sending my little guy back to the Shadow Realm. Glad to see that contributed to absolutely nothing. Well, time to take my anger out on the local wildlife. Everyone, please meet Mr. Trash Bear. I will torture him by force feeding random strange items such as, I don't know, a catfish, a dandelion, six week old cranberry sauce, bread I found in a bin. What? He made the plants grow back. Wait. Wait, no, no, don't do it. No. I arrived at the mountain lake as I wanted revenge. You see, yesterday I had visited this place searching for the legend, but unfortunately was thwarted. I needed it for the master angler achievement and also for my faith in my motor skills. Luckily, after only one miserable attempt, I managed to catch this absolute goblin. You, my friend, are staying in this tank for the rest of time. And when I next left my house, it was summer. You know what that means? It's time to consult the list. Okay, planting time. Planting finished. And now that I had the legend, no other fish could possibly evade me. Just like you, if you do not subscribe. Seeing as I could catch anything I wanted, I headed down to the beach, across the bridge, and down the pier. First cast I had was the crimson fish, and you, my friend, are here forever. Now, what to do next? Surprisingly, not much. At the moment, I had done most of what I could currently do in Pelican Town. A lot of things were locked behind a season or access to Ginger Island, and I didn't have this yet because I needed battery packs to repair the ticket machine. I'd been waiting throughout all of winter and throughout all of spring just for a single lightning storm, all the while completing simple and mundane tasks such as gathering truffles, completing quests, fishing, planting seeds, and socializing. Yo, farmer, you think if I show Emily my Reinhardt play the game, she'll like me? Yeah, this is uh, taking a while. Oh, let's go. The wind's died down. Anyways, it was in fact the 13th of summer when my long-awaited storm hit. This is, of course, because the 13th is the first guaranteed stormy day of the entire year. This is truly a sight to behold. But while I waited for them to cook up, I noticed my sweet jembo was fully grown, so carefully picking it, and riding to the secret woods, I shoved it in the mouth of a stone statue, securing my fourth star drop. And after spending some quick time destabilizing the local ecosystem, my precious battery packs were ready for harvest. Finally, all the resources were accumulated and I could head off to the Fern Islands. So I obviously uh, uh, went fishing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I caught a rainbow trout for a quest for the achievement. Then I went to the beach. No, I went back home to get some stone uh, for some... Okay, now I headed down to the beach and fixed the... B nope, I fished with Willy uh, for the rest of the day. 
This is truly the focused content you have all subscribed for. I remembered the goal the next morning, so I wandered into town, headed down, and eventually I ended up over at Willie's shed, where I handed in the goods. Willie and Robin got to work repairing the boat, so I returned when they finished, admiring their handcraft and hopping onto the ship. As we slowly rowed over to Ginger Island, the true magnitude of the task ahead of me dawned on me, and a decision was made. Before I made it to the island, I quickly created another list. One slightly longer than the previous. It contained Every item I needed to ship, every fish I needed to catch, every meal I needed to cook, every for every meal I needed every to cook, crafting recipe that I needed every to learn, species that I needed to eradicate. Man, this was a daunting thing to see. But still, I marched onwards, meeting the child, feeding nuts to local wildlife, and collecting some golden ones as well. Fifteen of them, to be exact, from where I used some to get this turtle off my property, and began harvesting the local resources. You may call this unethical colonialism. I call it a business opportunity. The next few game days were mostly spent on Ginger Island, getting myself comfortable planting crops, clearing the land, and exploring. But enough of that. It's time to go back to the cyber grind. You see, at this point, I had accumulated quite a collection of geodes from the Skull Caverns and the Volcano, so I headed over to Clint's and spent some time opening them and donating what little I could to the museum. But I already had most of the Omni Geode loot, so instead I traded them for treasure troves in the desert, hoping for some slightly better outcomes. I ended up donating a single item. But uh, wait a moment. Summer was almost over already, so I decided to take this opportunity to catch all of the summer fish I needed for the achievement, as well as for cooking ingredients. So, off to the river I rode, quickly caught a Dorado, then off to the ocean I rode, fishing for a sardine for an awfully long time, checking the wiki, and noticing that I was in the wrong season. So, off to the sewers I rode, to cry in shame, taking the opportunity to also catch a slime jack. My next targets resided in the mines, so I rapidly approached their destination, eventually catching a stonefish, as well as further down, where I found an ice pip. Now, I was really getting on a roll. The only mineral that I still needed to donate was marble, being only available in frozen geodes, which conveniently I had just cracked open my life savings of, I now had the perfect opportunity to spend some time grinding for some. I was so enthralled, in fact, that by the time I exited, it was already full. I think it's a good time now to introduce to you my ethical farm. Here you can see a tree farm doing okay, ancient fruit is also doing well, slime hutch is neglected as per usual, and piggies also as per usual, uh, there's a lot of them. Anyways, a new season, so you know what that means. I headed over to Pierre's and pulled out the list. Yeah, I think that's enough of that. But anyways, the list was truly becoming shorter. I quickly planted them all and headed out again, this time in search of some more sea creatures, notably the full legendary fish, Angler. At this point though, you might as well say it's a normal fish. My skills far outweigh anything this game can throw at me, including of course, the elusive midnight carp, which I sat next to the lake bed for three hours just to hook. You sir are going in a soup. My intentions already made, I arrived home and spent some time arranging all the fridges in my kitchen, promptly forgetting my intentions and instead heading over to Clint's to open up some frozen geodes. Luckily for me, this was a smart and calculated move, resulting in me getting a beautiful piece of marble and donating it. Now only missing a couple of bones and an old pot for the museum, I rode over to Ginger Island to do some excavating. I really hope this doesn't damage the artifacts. Luckily it didn't. Uh, that's because I didn't get any. No time for coping though, while I was still here on the island, spending some days getting to the top of the volcano didn't seem like a bad idea, so grinding these caves became my life for a while. Gaining the most unbelievably middle of the road loot the entire time, I eventually climbed my way out and finishing my journey off on the same note it had had from the very beginning, I stuffed some minerals into my hammer and promptly left. Day 4 was an exciting one. This was because I was a single quest off completing a big help. A single aquamarine to give to a single calorine and I would be done. And only after a little bit of searching the area, I found the target and handed over the gem. Only 9 achievements to go. Seeing as it was the middle of fall, the Stardew Fair was upon us. I collected some solid items, beat the strength meter and put them up on display. As Mayor Lewis inspected my sea cucumber, I visited the fortune teller before returning to claim my first place prize. Realizing I had already gotten the star drop from here, I promptly left as there were two museums that I needed to visit. First off, I handed some fingers to Gunter, then a spine to Professor Snail. Feeling a little rambunctious, I decided to guess both of the island survey questions and somehow absolutely popped off. Though, I don't really know how Snail Boy knew I got them right when he asked me to count them, but you know. 
free nuts, I'll take it. My next plan of action involved returning to the mainland museum as I was getting increasingly closer to completing the entire collection. All of the minerals were complete, as you can see, and for artifacts, my missing pieces were the prehistoric skull, prehistoric scapula, bone flute, trilobite, and chipped amphora. These four can be found in the Ginger Island, uh, bone pit, while these two have the unique property of, uh, pissing me off. Both being available from either digging worms at annoyingly low rates or from treasure troves, so I grabbed a bunch of them and appeared outside of Clint's door. Opening the first one, my bone flute appeared. Unfortunately, the rest were useless, so I donated it alone. Now, you may have noticed that I do in fact have a return scepter, and unfortunately, after this purchase, I have not yet returned to anywhere near my previous wealth. Luckily, I had a plan. You see, I'm currently a lumberjack, but for the foraging skill tree, if I chose botanist, all of my travels from all of my pigs would be iridium quality. And that means, uh, more money for me. So I pulled up to the sewers and gave a large deposit of funds to a stone statue, miraculously giving me the opportunity to choose botanist. Hmm, iridium mushroom. My life goals have been achieved, but more pigs are always welcome. While I waited for my barns to upgrade, I would regularly head over to visit Ginger Island and dig up the ancient burial grounds. Luck was relatively on my side with a prehistoric skull, but the scapula was still nowhere to be found. Another ginger item that I needed was the blue discus, a strange fish that I just couldn't seem to get a hold of. Oh well, I'll catch it later. Oh, what's this? A snake spine vertebrae? I've already donated one to Snail Boy, I might as well throw it away. Why did I do that? I would come to regret that decision. Still completely oblivious of that massive blunder, I continued on my way, marveling at my massive pumpkins and grinding down in the mines for some eradication goals, as well as for some bug meat for Willy. You see, the craft master achievement was going to be a pain, as a bunch of blueprints were only obtainable from the large help wanted board, which fittingly asked for some pretty large things. Willy's meat being one of them, I handed it over and- Damn! Mm. Dinner's on me today, lads. Wish I had some fish bait though. Uh... Willy handed me the recipe for a piece of tackle, but I wasn't done as I headed over to Ginger Island where my taro roots were ready for harvest, and shipping them, I completed the island ingredients quest for Calorine. That night, I entered the town to find Spirit's Eve was in full swing, so I took the golden pumpkin for myself and left. The following morning, Calorine congratulated me with the solar panel recipe. Not only this, but during my time in Ginger Island, I had picked up a trilobite, so donating it to the town museum, I realized something. I was only two items of completing my Collection, the prehistoric scapula and the chipped amphora. Now, I knew that the scapula was somewhere on Ginger Island, so I took the boat over and forgot about it, throwing out a cast, hoping for a blue discus. It took a while, and it was only uh, three inches long, but I eventually secured one. Only seven fish left. Unfortunately, all of them were only available in winter. It was a good thing then, I guess. Uh that it was winter. The first thing I did was accept a quest to catch a bunch of riverfish, and then I caught a bunch of riverfish. By the time I was finished, night had fallen, so I made my way down to the beach to catch a squid. Six fish to go. Getting real close now, I took a bus to the desert to get my hands on a scorpion carp. It was uh, pretty difficult, but now I only had five left, and coincidentally, my next travel destination was where the glacier fish resided. Well, uh, that was pretty easy. For the final four, I needed to catch one fish in the pirate's cove, and the last three were awaiting the night market on the ocean floor. Wanting this pirate's cove fish, I headed to Ginger Island, where I completely forgot and instead showed the frogman my juicy, plump melons. Thank you, my friend. You can have some nuts, my friend. Anyways, uh, back to Clint I went, opening up a bunch of treasure troves. Unfortunately, a chipped amphora was not one of my prizes, but a dwarfish gadget was. D a little machine. <laughs> Look at this little guy. I used it to craft a farm computer, which might be helpful at some point in time. Now, before I headed back to Ginger Island looking for the prehistoric scapula, I spent some time cooking up dishes which I'd recently unlocked thanks to my resource grinding. Placing them in my fridges, I took the ship over and ran straight over to the cove. Quickly fishing up a walnut and gathering some others, I carefully entered, threw out my line, and on my second cast, I got the stingray I was looking for. There was only the submarine fish left until Master Angler was achieved. So of course, with only around a week until the night market began, I decided that I would wait. And so, the waiting began. With eight days left, I returned to Ginger Island, where I harassed Leo's bird, chopped some rocks, and visited the shrine in the eastern forest. There, I placed a gem, earning myself some nuts, from where I teleported back home and fed my squid some delicious 
coral. On day two of waiting, I rushed straight down as it was the ice fishing festival. Man, how exciting. Absolutely thrilled by my massive prize, I went straight to bed. On day three, I checked on my wine, harvested some ancient fruit, and gathered some newly brewed drinks. From there, I rode into town and accepted Gunter's quest, which consisted of collecting and handing over a hundred bone bits. So of course, you know what that means. A visit to the local excavation site. After successfully excavating, I spent some time in the volcano, made it to level 9, opened my well-anticipated chest, and got some boots. To be honest, I was hoping for something worse so that I could complain about it. Day 4, I visited Robin and bought myself a new barn. Then heading back over to the island, I walked upwards, spotted a walnut, and spent 5 minutes trying to grab it. Gave up, ran through the entire volcano, and secured my ultimate prize of 8 taro boots. With still 4 days left, I was getting a little impatient. I collected my tree juice, then boated back over, re-excavated the excavation site, and visited Professor Snail for some advice. Huh. So frogs are hidden in dark, damp areas with lots of vegetation. That's gotta be the volcano, right? So I completed all of the levels, grabbed my prize of five pineapple seeds, but no frogs. I'll get some next time for sure. Three days left, and the hype was really setting in. Too excited to do anything that a real human would, I excavated the site once again and completed the volcano. Thank you, Concerned Ape, for the singular golden coconut. On day six, I got Quinn to open some coconuts, rewarding me with a hat. I headed back down to Ginger. Actually, nah. I'm gonna go unbalance the ecosystem. Heading down to the icy levels in the mines, looking to complete the skeleton eradication goal, I spent the entire day down there hunting my prey. I even got the added benefit of all of the bone bits. I hope Gunter won't be mad that his artifacts are 8 hours old. With only one more day until the night market arrived, I grabbed my bones and handed them over to Gunter. But not wanting to visit the island, I decided instead to complete the quest from Birdie. You know, the the island local. Handing over the war memento to Kent, I got some sauce. From Gus, I got a rose. From Sandy, I got a remote. From George, I got a stone. From the wizard, I got a, uh, a wriggling worm. And finally, from Willy, I got a pirate's locket, completing the quest. I headed over to the island and handed the locket over, earning myself a bunch of nuts and the recipe for fairy dust. It's just that easy. While I was here remembering Snail Boy's advice, I entered the lush forest and the first bush I cut dropped a frog. I mean, he could have just done that himself, but... I'm not complaining. Oh, the night market has begun. Paying the fee, I slowly descended into the depths. I was so close to completing one ninth of this video. First came the spookfish, next was the blobfish, and finally the midnight squid was lifted out of the water. Master Angler had been achieved. Eating up my star drop reward, I took the boat over and grabbed some more nuts, which finally allowed me to enter the walnut room. Welcome to the walnut room, farmer boy. This place was absolutely essential for this video because a total of 5 recipes could be purchased from here. On top of this, although it wasn't my main goal, I also wanted to get perfection and this tracker was perfect for the job. But recipes in mind, I accepted the Harder Minds challenge and entered. This place does in fact live up to its name. My terrible daily luck as well as my lack of cognitive function really added to the effect of I don't want to be here. Sadly, this simply lengthened the process. You see, these mines would be my home for the next couple of days. I would return every morning to see even more migraine-inducing enemies such as the golem but faster, giant arachnid and deceased British colonist that transmits a foreign disease simply by breathing on you, nauseating me to the point I can no longer consume nutrients. But I pushed through and eventually made it to the bottom. Even better, along the way I collected 6 radioactive ore, enough to sell 1 bar and 1 ore, inching me ever closer to the full shipment achievement. But in the meantime, I was ready to collect some hard-earned recipes. Boating over, I began by in fact not buying a recipe and instead grabbing Pierre's stock list. Hopefully it would come in handy for polyculture. Asking the monkey politely for his nuts, I decide to give the dig site one more chance to give me a scapula. If not here, would it ever show up? Oh, okay. Never mind. This was truly an exciting day. I headed over to the desert where I traded for some treasure troves and hoping for both of my remaining items at once, I opened them all. Unfortunately, I had no such luck. Dejected, I wandered off, knowing that such a moment could only exist within my deepest dreams. Well, I might as well grab this artifact. What can I say? I had faith from the beginning. I donated them both and... Apparently... I had forgotten something. But what could it be? I looked over every single item I had accumulated, but there was no chance of me noticing a single missing item. So I did what I had to do. Slowly but surely, my museum was transformed into the example one on the wiki. If I perfectly lined everything up, surely the outlier would show its face. Just hoping it wasn't some incredibly niche artifact, I- Oh. 
it's an emerald. I placed it down, finishing the entire collection. Munching on my star drop, I set my sights on a new objective. Not one involving an achievement, but simply one that would save me massive time in the future. Said investment was four obelisks. Noting down all of the ingredients I needed, I returned home and promptly forgot what I was doing, instead deciding to make a start on the Craftmaster achievement, ignoring the entire existence of the workbench and individually picking out ingredients to craft deluxe speed grow. Quickly and inevitably getting bored, I headed down to the mines as I only had four more species to eradicate. I worked down there for a while before resetting my sights on the obelisks as having them would save me an immense amount of time. Slowly gathering up all of the needed resources from Ginger Island and the desert alike, taking a break to receive a ruby at the Feast of the Winter Star, grinding daily in the mines for radioactive ore and monster eradication goals, searching for a prismatic jelly, harvesting goods, clearing the land and proposing solely for the star drop. Only weeks after I had set my mind to it, my four obelisks were pla- oh. I didn't account for how poor I am. Wanting to change this fact, I purchased a couple of seeds from Pierre and returning home, decide to plant them. Okay, so it's around uh, two o'clock right now. I should be done in just a couple of hours. Well, I'd call that relatively successful. On a different note, I was now married. This meant massive lifestyle changes, such as the crops, already watered by sprinklers, will now sometimes be watered for me. This might take a while to adjust to. So while I was, I had something more important to keep my mind off it money. You see, I had just come home from a business trip to the desert, where I purchased 384 starfruit seeds. I laid them all out on my ginger island farm, when I realized my fertilizer was slightly lacking. Well, crafting some seemed like the only solution, so I got to work deforesting the land, when something peculiar happened. A small blue bean fell into my hand. You see, I had accepted Mr. Key's bean quest, asking me to plant 500 key fruits, which grow from key beans. This was certainly going to be one of the tasks of all time. Seeing as my farmland had completely been taken by my starfruit on the island, I had no choice but to expand into my normal one. Creating a small corner of farmland, I accepted the ectoplasm quest and headed down into the mines. I am here to end an endangered species and search for blue beans. I got the goop in no time at all, but my bean quest was not so successful. Change of plans, I had quite a lot of geodes stored up and the next 12 hours of Quint's life was looking quite palatable. With a low but existing chance to drop some beans, I got to work one Watching Clint open them all up. I opened a total of 314 geodes that day and planted a solid 46 beans by nightfall. And over the next 18 days, I made wine, searched for bones for Snail Boy, harvested crops, fished for salmon, traversed the volcano, placed the island obelisk, crafted some miscellaneous items, befriended Leo, realized I needed key seasoning to get the Crobus statue, harvested crops, planted crops, and attended the flower dance. But most of all, I farmed key fruit. Like 500 of them. Every day, I would harvest what I could, put them in a seed maker, and expand exponentially. Eventually, on the 25th, everything came together. Penny finally gave me the final star drop, completing an achievement, and my sweet gem berry was ready for harvest, which was the final item I needed to ship. And the icing on the cake, my empire had reached its breaking point, and it was time to harvest the fruit. 503 in total. Rest assured, I'm never gonna do that again. I sold them all, and that night, I completed the full ship and achievement. Now, there was only five achievements left the hardest ones in the game. I was unfortunately now over my budget of one week, but this wasn't going to stop me. My first goal was to wonder why I hadn't got the polyculture achievement yet. I had ticked everything off the list a while ago, so what was I missing? Wait, could it be the sweet gem berry? Did I have to ship 15 of them? Hoping that wasn't the case, I instead planted some random crops on Ginger Island that I hadn't shipped and continued to craft any items that I had no recollection of crafting beforehand, because unfortunately, that's all of the information I'm given. Anyways, it was summer, again. And as much as I already had all four obelisks, there was still one more thing I wanted money for. It wouldn't help with the video, speed anything up, or contribute to any achievements. Said item is the golden clock. You see, my remaining achievements were these. Craft Master, which still required a bunch of keys recipes. Gourmet Chef, which required a bunch more television recipes. Polyculture, which I'm not sure what it still required. Protector of the Valley, which required me to commit mass genocide. And of course, Fector's Challenge, which I guess you'll just have to wait and see. But you can probably tell none of them require money anymore. You know what that means? The Golden Clock. A building that stops any debris from spawning and all of my fences from degrading. A neat thing for the small price of 10 million gold. Again, doesn't really contribute to anything other than perfection. You know, 
I want. Completing some melon planting the following morning, I accepted a quest and descended into the Skull Caverns with the goal of reaching level 100, except that I had the unfortunate downside of a failing digestive tract. This was a tough challenge. Multiple times I had to leave, narf down some grub, then descend once again. I eventually managed to get my hands on a vampire ring which kept me slightly sustained whenever I committed a first degree felony. This was the final piece of the puzzle and I was able to reach the bottom claiming my bountiful prize. And when I got home, the bounty just continued with a large crop of juicy, plump, and genetically modified melons. The golden clock was getting ever closer. I replaced them with red cabbage, then in hindsight, slightly regretfully, let Penny redecorate my beautiful bedroom. I'm just really hoping it doesn't turn out so badly that I need to rethink my marriage. Before this turned disastrous, I spent some time evacuating the bedroom and crafting some random items. But after only one short trip to the skull caverns, I returned home, fell asleep, and awoke to this. Uh, well, I'm happy to say it's not so bad that I I can be bothered reverting it back to the original state. Plus, I get some cool things like mystery floating stars. They unfortunately would not help me with my crafting mission. So, I wasted no time in collecting some ingredients. Starting in Pierre's shop and making it all the way to the dangerous mines, I decided that I had enough things to craft to warrant the use of a workshop. This was the greatest maneuver of my life. I tried my best to place these random items about the place on my farm, but really, this was all wasted time. There was one thing that I needed, and it wasn't braziers. It was, in fact, radioactive ore. You see, this stuff is very annoying. Only spawning in the dangerous mines and even down there extremely rarely, it's needed for all of these recipes. And after a tedious couple of days down there, I may have gotten the ore. But man, I think I gained some real life phobias. Deciding to take it down a notch, I instead took a swig of monster musk and descended into the skull caverns. Now, you may be wondering, what was that mysterious liquid you just consumed? Well, Amelia. It's my special concoction that increases the spawn rates of enemies. It's like perfume for monsters. And instead of increasing attraction, it increases the need for violence. So why would I use it? It all stems back to Marlin's eradication goals, and in particular, this lad here. No concrete spawn rates, complete RNG when it comes to prehistoric levels. These pepperexes are a real pain. So my plan was find a prehistoric floor with monster musk and kill 20 in one level. And unbelievably, I actually managed to find one. Only slapping a about a couple of them, my eradication goal was reached, and now I only had four achievements left. Craft Master still being one of these, I accepted a quest from Mr. Key to buy recipes and headed up into town to catch some more legendary fish. After some kerfuffle, I managed to catch the first of the five new fish I had been tasked on hooking. Spawning in the same spots slightly harder, they were basically legendary fish 2.0. Radioactive carp was caught not long after. Just kidding. I sat here for the entire day until 2 a.m. in the morning, not hooking this bastard even a single time. I am having a lot of fun right now. It was only until the next morning after harvesting and trekking back did I hook and easily catch this stupid fish. The next cast I threw was insanely the glacier fish. And now with three out of the five, I arrived at the mountain lake and fished until I got my fingers on the legend too. Man, this is getting real hype. I'd better get to bed quickly to rest up for the sun of crimson fish tomorrow. My energy bar was almost depleted the following morning, but I still rode down to the beach and set out my rod. Quickly enough, the child was hooked and my quest was complete. You, my friend, can live in the fridge. Done with fishing, hopefully forever, I decide to retire, leisurely cooking and cultivating hundreds of plants. As my cooking collection slowly grew, so did my thirst for crafting recipes. So I returned to the walnut room and purchased the final one in the game. Or so I thought. Great work, farmer boy. This grilled fish is about to be fire. Anyways, now that I had these, I was forced out of retirement by inflation rates and my strange obligation to craft a large hopper. This turned out to be quite an undertaking. Through my struggles to scrape together 10 million gold, I was visiting the dangerous mines to dig up any radioactive ores that I could find. This was a daily endeavor until I got enough, threw them in a furnace, and forgot that that ever happened. But today was a special day in which I had not forgotten something. That's right, since I had arrived on this island, not once had I visited the Pirate's Cove when there was actually pirates there. Hello mate, care for a game of darts? Damn, okay. Here's a walnut, you wanna play again? Uh, uh, I mean, here's your... 
is your walnuts. Seeing as there was nothing else for me to personally acquire, I left. That night was the dance of the Moonlight Jellies. As you can see, I was so enthralled that I tabbed out of the game. When I tabbed back in, it was fall, and still wanting to enter the top 1% of economical wealth, I got to work plowing the fields. Even with my iridium hoe, this was a massive undertaking and took the entire day until the place was just hoed and watered. But not wanting to waste the opportunity handed to me, I drank a triple shot of coffee and got fertilizing. Finishing with no more than 30 minutes left in the day, I got as many pumpkin seeds down as I could, but ultimately failed. Cleaning up the following morning, I filled up some crab pots for ingredients, cooked up a couple of dishes, and checked my progress. I only needed fried eel, spicy eel, lobster bisque, shrimp cocktail, and one last unknown recipe until I finished that achievement. There was light at the end of the tunnel. Now you may have noticed that eels are two out of the five meals that I needed to cook. Unfortunately, they only came out in the rain, so while I waited, I went through the mines looking for bug meat, dug out the excavation site and donated some bones, visited the frog, and in no time at all, rain was falling. Heading to the beach, I threw out my rod and caught two. Quickly returning to the mines and completing Clint's quest, I finally returned to my kitchen and chefed up both dishes. I was getting real close now. I made a geo crusher the next morning and spent some time harvesting and planting my massive ginger island crop. I truly was inching closer to 10 million gold. That night, I got my first fairy of this entire place through. So that's pretty cool. During that same night, Penny gave birth to a baby girl. I named the poor child Frerenard. Just kidding. I instead went with Beepo because I think that's pretty cute. Heading over to Ginger Island, I decided it was time to complete another of Key's quests, so I entered the room and looked at the perfection tracker. You can see here that the cooking recipes was now at 98%. Thanks to the crab pots, I was able to cook both the lobster bisque and the shrimp cocktail and was only missing the mystery food. But when it came to crafting, I'm getting a little behind. And this is the fault of the snake spine vertebrae. You may remember all the way back on day five when I said, oh, what's this? A snake spine vertebrae. I've already donated one to Snail Boy. I might as well throw it away. It turns out you need two of them to complete the snake skeleton, and throwing out my second was the biggest mistake of my life. You see, it was the last bone I needed to complete the bone museum, which would give me the final crafting recipe as a reward, and the only place where this bone can spawn is the western beach on Ginger Island. I've been going there and searching the sands every single day, no luck. Ever. I had chosen Key's Prismatic Grange, by the way, but at my point in the game, there was no challenge at all. I returned a couple of days later and received my reward of some key seasoning and a key to the town. My reward also came as knowledge as I was reminded of something very important. For the polyculture achievement, which I was wondering why I hadn't achieved, must have included coffee beans as a crop. And throwing some in, the next morning, I was proven correct. Now, does anyone remember the frog? Because recently, I had, and wanting to collect all of the golden walnuts while I awaited the snake spine, I bought some garlic seeds from Pierre and planted them outside his cave. While they grew up all big, I enchanted some weaponry at the forge, brewed up some wine, scoured the beach, and wait a minute, Gus is at the resort, and he's selling the tropical curry recipe. What a surprise! <laughs> I'll be honest, this was not a surprise at all. In fact, I had been visiting this resort every day for Gus to sell me this recipe for months now. But I finally had my hands on it, so I returned home and cooked it up. Oh, let's go. I just need a craft uh, incubator. And that's it. Literally just the incubator. Let's go. Uh... So, of course, I looked through the beaches once again but to no avail. But my pumpkins were also ready, and remember, that golden clock was only getting closer. I harvested all of the delicious vegetables, then replanted some flowers before scouring the beach, admiring my achievements menu, and clearing out the volcano. But finally, the day had come. My garlic was ready for harvest. I, I love bulbous. The frogman handed me the last of the walnuts he had to offer, and I continued on my day. The game at this point was truly one of the games. Every morning, I would tend to my pigs, maybe tend to the rest of my farm, search the eastern beaches of Ginger Island, maybe go through the volcano mines, and repeat. And I was unfortunately not getting any closer to the snake spine vertebrae. But I was getting ever closer to the golden clock, which each time I harvested my star fruit, I knew the day would most certainly come. In the morning of the 26th, with 9.6 million in 
in the bank, I collected 24 Iridium quality ancient fruit wines and threw them all in the shipping bin. And thus, I woke up with easily 10 million in the bank. Just to secure the win, I harvested all the fairy roses I had growing, sold the majority, searched the beaches, then rode up to the wizard's house. Selecting the golden clock, I placed it down next to my grandfather's grave. This was truly a heart-wrenching moment. But you know, I had been playing Stardew Valley for between 3 to 12 hours a day for almost two weeks straight now, and it was winter again. But this winter, I saw hope ahead of me. The light at the end of the tunnel was shining brighter than ever. Wanting to free up space for an ostrich farm, I emptied all of my barns of pigs, then got to work searching for artifact spots. Every single day, I would do something useless like expand my crystallarium collection or move my clock or brew some wine before heading back to Ginger Island and searching along those beaches. The final item before the achievement was so close yet so far. Until, of course, after scouring these beaches every single day, 22 days straight, it was the 23rd. I looked all the way up, but to no avail. Dejected, but expecting nothing more, I returned to my farmland. Noticing an artifact spot next to the chests, I dug it up and... No chance, I'm so happy. The snake spine vertebrae had been acquired. The bone museum was complete. Snail boy was very happy, and I received the incubator recipe. Crafting it and some other fertilizers, craft master was achieved. Now, you may be thinking, every achievement has been completed. Well, with that presumption, you'd be dead wrong. If you didn't know, Journey of the Prairie King is a mini game in Stardew Valley found in the Stardrop Saloon. There are three different levels, each with a mini boss and a couple of stages. It starts in the prairie, has a couple of stages, moves on to the forest, has a couple of stages, and ends in the cemetery, where you meet Fector, the final boss. I had to complete all of this without taking a single point of damage. There is a reason the concerned ape felt ashamed enough of this challenge that he made it a secret. But oh well, nothing else to do but to get grinding. I had gotten all the way to Fector, but this, this was not going to be possible. From whatever viewpoint I look at this from, I had no choice but to give in. This video was just going to be impossible. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Now, I'll be honest, I did cheese this a little bit. You can learn how to from a video on my second channel linked in the comment. But nonetheless, the challenge was over and Stardew Valley was complete. And it only took 676 hours. And then I fell down here. <laughs> how do I get home? Uh, is there, is there any, any way home? Can, can anyone help me? Uh, hello? People watching? Um, maybe, maybe, maybe clicking like will, will, will help me out. <laughs> 